our July webinar series. Good afternoon, Chuck. Good afternoon, Lori, and we welcome Matthew aboard, who is our architect of this, and we're happy to have him with us. And if there's any tech questions, we've got the guy on board. Um, again, if you recall, July is the time when we're going through short webinars every Wednesday. We call it the summertime, and the learning is easy. And we're here to talk about um, favorite reports. And again, uh, we're going to kind of go through the basics of that. Uh, what they are, setting them up, running and managing uh, the global report favorites, which actually, Matthew, I think you added after uh, the initial personal favorites were done. Um, so people like that, they wanted globals. And uh, give you a few tips in closing, and then hopefully let you get back and add more to your, to your inventory. So before we get too far along here, I want to find I want to well explain to you or give you my idea why it's important uh, or why they're going to benefit you. Number one, it saves you time. And, you know, you can get to a report in fewer clicks. Um, number two, if you're a admin, you can set up global reports. Uh, so again, you can have master reports that everybody in the office uses, and also allow in each individual user to have a reports, report set. Here's the big one. If you're the keeper of the flame or the administrator, you can set up quick reports for other people. If you've got a coordinator or a director who doesn't get into manager very often but has a report they like, you can give them a shortcut to that, which hopefully would keep it real simple for them um, and again, let them start getting some benefits out of your manager. Uh, pairing up a query. Again, uh, as you know, with reports, you have an unlimited number of queries. Depending on what a uh, report is designed to do, what you can do with favorite reports is actually go to the same query every time. So again, that you make sure your user is using the right query for a particular report. And of course, the idea that the streamlined path to a report and a query, but it still offers you options, uh, exporting, modifications, saving as, uh, that the quote, regular system does. So before we get going then into favorite reports, um, I'm going to ask for a show of hands. So would you raise your hand if you have started to do anything with, with favorite reports? Raise them up high. I just want to kind of see. Oh, I don't see it. But Brittany, bless you, Brittany, would know that Brittany is out there. Oh, goodness, we may have to. Oh, all right, we've got a couple more coming in. All right, well, that's why you're here. Uh, and so there are two areas of favorite reports, personal favorite reports. Uh, if you run the, 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 the middle launch bar is right in the center, favorite reports. Now, each user. Each individual user in your system can have up to 10 different reports. You can have a different report for each different user as their favorites. Multiple ways to get there. Number one we were showing you is if you have the quick launch screen up, there's a big button right in the center. Number two, you have a shortcut to it. I still love shortcut keys. And number three, you can actually go to reports down to favorites. So that will get you that will get you the the reports in the system. So, uh, what do we do with those reports? How do you build them? Um, you go into the favorite report setup. Whoa, back favorite report setup, and start working through this. I'm going to go through an example in a bit. Uh, once you ha and so let's let, let me go ahead and roll over to that right now. So we're going to run over to the demo. There we go. All right. So here we are at the favorite reports menu. And again, I have the shortcut, the quick launch set up so I can just click in the middle of the screen or else there is, of course, the menu or the control F1. So if I wanted to add a new favorite report, uh, say maybe financial accounting, I wanted to do an income and, en uh, an income and enrollment report. So I go set report. I first pick the reporting area, accounting, demographics, courses. So I'm going to do enrollment and income. That's under accounting. Then I pick the sub area. 
Now the sub, again, accounting reports area has a drop down that you then pick items between here. So I want a day income and enrollment summary. That's what I want. So that's the report area. Now I pick the report. You can either choose the default report or pick any one of the optional reports that are in that area. So if I said income and enrollment report, and then I pick the query. What is the query I want to do? Course number, courses between two dates, courses with the wait list. And again, you would have to build the query through the normal report process in order to have it show up in the drop down here. You can't create a query on the fly here. Uh, we're going to say course number begins with. Uh, you, t you might want to do it by range of dates. Again, you can make whatever query you want. And we hit done. That's it. I now have that report set up as a favorite of mine. So when I want to go back and run that report, um, and Matt, did I close you, and not save that? Yeah, you I forgot to hit save. <laughs> Funny thing, when you're working on something, you want to save it, you have to hit save. Darn you, Matthew, you should have known I really wanted that report. Course number, done. And you hit save. All right, now I can close. There it is. All right, so I'm ready to run the report. Um, incidentally, view notes. Uh, when you were building that report, if you had made any particular notes, uh, they would show. Let's take a look here. Let's find one that's got some notes here. Mailing labels, uh, standard labels. So again, if you put in notes on the report, which you should if you're modifying, you can view them from the, the view notes area. All right, running the report now. Because I chose a additional report, I don't have the option to pick additional or optional. Um, I can still choose export. I can still do modify. Uh, in re reports dealing with registrations or courses can include or exclude canceled courses. I still have the option to do output as. So I'm going to hit OK. And now, instead of having to pick a query from my 200 or however many queries, because the report is predefined to use this one query, there it is. So I can put in my 15S for spring, summer, whatever. And now I've got all of these uh, courses um, brought up for me, ready to go. So that is the process of uh, setting up and running uh, your quick reports. All right, maintenance there. All right, well, questions. Uh, any questions? Anybody? Have any questions or issues about that? I mean, that's basically it. Well, like I said, of course, Brittany is our is one of our aces, and certainly should we expect her to know this stuff. But again, anybody should be able to create a favorite report. All right. She's Lori, laughing. At anything? You. She's laughing at you via text. Oh. <laughs> okay. Um, okay. So we run favorite reports. Um, we talk about we still have all the report setup options. I'm kind of reviewing that. Replacing editing a report. If you want to change something on a report, you go back into the set report area. If you want to delete a report out of your favorite reports and you say, well, I don't have another one right now to use, but that one, it's no longer my favorite or we don't use it anymore in our office. Uh, you basically go to the set reports button and just hit the delete key. Now, I'm going to roll back to that because this is uh, the delete key works. Uh, come, 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 come. There we go. Oh, one more. Come on. Tab to the right. Hang on, guys. I got to get, darn it, I'm going to get there yet. Here we, I am at the right area. So if I wanted to say, well, if I decided, well, this particular report, I've changed my mind. I don't want to use it. If I wanted to edit it, I could go in and just edit the contents and change the new report. But if I say, well, I just don't want it at all, just hit the delete key. And that will wipe this out. Now note, on your version, this is, I'm on 24.7. You probably don't have the little cheat note here on the top, but the delete key works. If you've got a report, you fiddle with it, and you say, eh, change my mind, I don't want to do it, just go into the area, hit the delete key, and it will go away. 
So again, you click in the area. If I hit the delete key, this report would disappear. And I could always go back and, and create a new one. All right. I think that got us back into the area there. Deleting the favorite report. Global report. All right. Any questions about the favorite reports? Lori, anything pop up or buzz so far? Uh, people wanting to know if you can rename the report once you get it in there. And I don't believe. Oh, oh, okay. Yes. Report. I thank you. And Matthew, uh, absolutely. We need to do that. So the idea of the report, when you pick a report, when you pick a report and you get a report name, and I think I may have choose default on this. Um, the report name is pasted into this uh, this kind of notes for you, but but you as the uh, creator can edit it. So you could say, Doctor Smith, this is your X X Y Y Z Z whatever report. So again, yes, absolutely. Uh, Matthew has that, so you can edit that and do with it whatever you want. Now, I don't believe you can edit the notes on that report. You'd have to go back to modify on that particular report. But yes, you may label this. So if you're doing this, again, for a director or a coordinator, and the report might be deadbeat, just do it deadbeats, you might call this outstanding uh, debits uh, for uh, XYZ programs. And you might even create a you might even create a query that is hardwired to only run courses within a time frame for a particular subject code, yada, 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 and it'll basically automatically roll through. Uh, Matthew, I have a question for you. If you were to set up a report, well, let me go ahead and do this. Oh, you can't predefine the data value. Well, I guess you, if you had a query with predefined data values, it would just run the query, right? right. So if you said, uh, course enrollment is greater than 10, and I always wanted it to be greater than 10, it would just go ahead and run the query it wouldn't ask, just like normal behavior. All right, all right, right. so we've got that settled. Um, okay, that was a long answer to a short question here, but um, anything but else that right was now, pretty Lori? Cool. I didn't, uh, no, no, that's it. I, I didn't even know that, though. That's pretty cool. Yeah, yeah. So that um, you can uh, you can modify this label for for you here. Just do deadbeats, and so we might say, Paula, uh, this is right. Your dead, your outstanding deadbeat. Um, this is your outstanding balances report. Save it, and we save it. And is it going to save? Here we go. Save, close. And there's the report uh, label that we, I guess, saves, leaves the screen open. It doesn't, it, it doesn't close anything. All right, I think we're getting ready to go into global reports. All right, what is the difference between global reports? Number one, it can be set up by the, uh, a master user. It is limited to someone with a level five access. Uh, so you have to be at least level five. You don't have to be an administrator uh, to do that. When you set up global reports, everybody who uses that, ver that, that particular ACEWARE database will have, the manager database will have the same 10 reports in their list. Um, and again, creating, editing, modifying is exactly the same procedure as in favorite reports. So let's see if I can land on the system here. And we're going to go to reports, global favorites. Okay. Uh, it says global favorites. You'll note these are different reports. So again, if I were to add a report here, I'm going to create a new report for mailing labels here. Demographics, mailing labels, report name default, query is going to be an interest code, da, 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 people with an interest code, done. Save that. Now, if I, now let's, oh, I gotta close, I keep forgetting. Okay, so I've got some private reports for me. If I were to log off, see if I can do this on the fly, and I log back in as Rosie. Good afternoon, Rosie Registrar. And I go to global reports now. I have the same global reports as did Chuck. However, if I look at favorite reports, None have been set up. Miss Rosie has not set up any of her her own uh, 
her own uh, local reports. So that is um, the difference. Uh, again, global reports, they, they're global. And so if you've got standard ones, you're able to do that. A couple tips. I love the frog. Lori, had to, you outdid yourself on the PowerPoints. One of the cool things is that if you are a system admin and you have to be able to get the passwords, which means, yeah, you'd have to be a system admin, you can go into any user in the system and edit, modify, help them create favorite reports. So again, you don't have to, if again, you've got a shrinking violet or the dean who, who uses it once a week to do something, they don't have to remember, you don't have to go over to their office and edit. You can go into their user profile, set up the user report that they want, and just tell them, hey, go to favorite reports and run number one. Uh, and they're able to do that. So. Number two, uh, some reports cannot be run from the favorites area. And there are two or the three unique ones, cash box, invoice, and statistical reports don't have, they use a unique interface. So I'm sorry about that. We, we, we can't run those. Here's one. How do I know what reports should be in my favorites? Well, presume, and, and maybe you're the keeper of the flame and you're trying to identify some that staff ought to have in their favorites because it'll save them time. How do you know which one should uh, you use? Well, under the deadbeat report area, additional reports, you should have two report areas, reports by frequency, reports by area frequency. I noted that a couple of customers I looked at, those reports may have been deleted across the time. If you don't have those, call your tech and we'll send those out to you or download a demo and and export it from the demo. So what those, what those do now, I'm back in live. If you go to accounting deadbeat, additional reports, and again, any query that you've got runs fine. So we're gonna pick a fake query 14. But report, you'll see here, reports by area frequency, reports by frequency. I'd suggest reports by area frequency and when you run that, it will show you every report in the system, and it'll show you, come over here, baby. It'll show you the number of times it's been run. So you'd say, well, wait a minute, here's a refund report. Boy, that's one, or one line by course refunds. That's a report that ought to be in the uh, favorite reports because it's been run 4,500 times. And of course, that would be uh, the place I would start if you're trying to see, okay, just do deadbeats revise, income and enrollment, inco enrollment and income report. Susie's invoice, um, 1485. Yeah, those are ones that would be certainly candidates for then your, your favorite reports. And again, I'll, if you want to ask questions about that later, those are some cool reports. I want to make sure you know those are in there. Uh, they also can be used, incidentally, that favorite report area for um, identifying what reports to put in the default area. Uh, so that if you wanted to, say, modify a report and put it into the default. Oh, this is a snippet. We don't worry about that, no. Put that in the default area. All right. And as always, of course, help is available on the website with the uh, online reference guide. So uh, that was it. I promised you a short and a sweet one, and we did it on almost 20 minutes. Uh, Matthew, anything I missed? We, we pretty much cover everything? Uh, I think so. Um, I am going to roll back to live, if I can, and I'll show you the uh, Lori questions. And while we're answering questions, um, I'm going to show you while you're thinking about a question uh, this uh, editing, oh, I have to log back in as an admin now. Okay, so I want to go tools, password maintenance. So if I wanted to go to Rosie's record and edit her favorite reports, I could go in and say, Rosie, you run income and enrollment all the time. So I'd go to accounting, income and enrollment, I'd pick the report, I'd pick her query. And now when Rosie would log in, she would have that report in her, uh, in her uh, favorite reports. 
How are we doing, Lori? Everybody seem to be on a groove on that? I think collectively there's a big round of applause out there, and so I'm, I'm really excited about that. People like the new feature. Well, we yeah, and this question. is... question? Yes, ma'am. Go ahead. Go, go ahead. Uh, can you edit favorite reports by user group? No. Maintenance? Okay. Uh, that is an interesting question, but uh, no. So it would... You could go in for each individual user to do that. Matthew, I'm not sure how you'd clone um, those favorite reports by user group. That'd be kind of a tricky thing to navigate. Um, I hear what you're saying. So if you had a group of five coordinators and they all ran pretty much the same reports, could you just do them in mass? Right now, obviously, no. Matthew, he can think about that. And, and we can maybe put it on the, pod, the cogitate list. So right now, no, you would have to do it uh, one by one. Now again, for, for, for mass level reports, the idea of putting them in the global reports area, you've got 10 different reports there. So something that you've got a group of people that run a lot of reports, and certainly coordinators would be part of that, go in and, and, you know, and set those up under your global favorites. So. Other questions? Um, I've got a couple of people saying that they're looking for a specific report and it's not running. And I think it boils down to that third level because I run registrations, registrations with fees and payments. Um, well, one of the fees and payments is a sub area. Yeah. I, I'm trying to think, Matthew, are there any sub-areas? Now, I'm, and I guess in terms of when you're going into the area, so we were in accounting, and of course, Cashbox wasn't on the list, but you should have one, two, three, four, five options for when you're doing accounting. So if we do, um, of course, uh, da, 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 accounting sub-areas, one, two, three, four, five. So. Is it that the sub area is not there, or that they can't find the report name? Because, uh, and again, that it, uh, the sub area is not there. Well, I, again, there would be in accounting, for instance. I basically, you'll need to send us a note or shoot a shoot an email to me, Chuck at Aceware, with the area that you're in, and what sub area piece you are missing, uh, and we'll we'll chase that down for you. So. All right, other questions? That's it. People still saying they really like it. And cool. Well, get out there them. and try your favorite reports. Set them up. Uh, remember, run your uh, deadbeat um, Run your deadbeat report, reports by area frequency or reports by frequency, which will give you um, kind of a ranking of how many times a report. Now, note, a report is printed. Uh, one of the one of the things to note about this, and this is again in the show additional reports, run count, or this really is the number of times a report is printed. You might, if uh, this is the note, if you're going to use that um, uh, frequency report, if you have users who look at a report but don't print it the run count will not increment. So you might need to obviously find out from users what reports they use the most uh, and correlate that or triangulate that with the number of times it's been printed to help them identify or begin to start building out what favorite reports you should be putting in there for them. So, all right. Um, any other questions popping up? That's it. Okay, back next week. Pool. <laughs> Everybody, yeah, back in school. Uh, no more, you know, we're, we're, we're classes dismissed for the day. Get back to work. Uh, next week, we're going to learn about Matthew's brand new SMS tool. I, uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a wonderful tool for those of you that want to get into SMS messaging with your participants, and that'll be next week. So until then, have a great week, and uh, we'll uh, keep on learning in the summertime. <laughs> Thank you, Lori, and bye-bye, everybody. Bye.